So Laura Moss, director, writer of Birth, Rebirth. Uh, first off, this was an intense film to sit through. And I have to say, just like during that first sequence, the opening is absolutely just like traumatizing. Was that <laughs> hard to get through shooting that? Oh, man, it was so delightful to get through shooting that, frankly. Uh, you know, it was it was something that we planned meticulously with my with Lisa Forst, my special effects artist and my medical advisor, Emily Ryan. Uh, the medical realism was really important for us to get right in the film. And so, um, you know, there were pitfalls. It was an expensive build to do a, a full cadaver that was anatomically correct. But uh, we also couldn't afford legs, so we had to shoot around the missing legs, <laughs> as you can tell, it's, oh, there's always limitations in filmmaking. Um, but yeah, I have to say I was really nervous about how that would look and turn out. And so honestly, when we got to set and it and it looked the way it did, it was really a delight. Oh. Now, uh, to give the audience a little bit of an idea of what this movie's about, this is a film about a person who works in the morgue department who has to reanimate the corpse of a little girl of uh, somebody that was lost. Uh, despite being labeled as a horror film, this is very much a tale about someone who wants to bring their child back. How did you find the balance in sort of like horror and drama and what it's really trying to say? Because horror's really been getting a nice elevation like within this last year. Like, there's a lot more thoughtful movies, more than just, like, because the little girl could have gone around and gone on a killing spree and, you know, <laughs> turned into Chucky or something like that in the movie, and that's totally not the case. How did you find that balance when you were making this movie? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it was really in looking at films that inspired me that defied genre categorization. So, you know, Dead Ringers, the, the Cronenberg film, is a big influence, which, which has horror elements, but is really a, a character drama with a lot of humor in it. Um, you know, and I think that that was something that, that really, watching that film felt like a North Star for me. Um, Todd Haynes' is Safe is another kind of like medical thriller, but it's really contained and really disciplined. So I was looking at those kinds of films as, as examples of what have gone before that, that created this sense of tension and dread without relying on jump scares. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which I, I got to say, like, jump scares is one of the things I hate the most, not only because it makes me, like, scream in the middle of the audience, <laughs> but also because it's, it's just it's, it's a cheap method to try to find real scares from anyone, you know, because the real scare is really what's going on with these characters and with bringing this little girl back. You know, when it comes to Judy, and I hope I'm saying her last name correctly, is it Reese? Reyes. Reyes. Mm -hmm. Okay. When it comes to her character, she's mostly known for her comedic role in Scrubs and having her play someone in the medical profession again. How did you come about uh, getting her in the film, which she was fantastic, by the way? I think she's amazing and she's also a pleasure to work with. Um, I had her in mind from inception, from writing the film. And it was really because I saw her in this 2013 drama called Gun Hill Road. So mm -hmm. I, too, really knew her primarily as, you know, Carla from Scrubs. Yeah. Um, but I saw her tremendous dramatic chops in that film, and I knew she could do it. And I was excited to, to sort of cast against type in that way and, and give Judy the opportunity to do, to do a horror film, which, uh, to my knowledge, she's never done. Yeah. Now, how, how, who did you get for the score? Because they did a fantastic job where... <laughs> You kind of had this synthetic thing going on, you know, sort of like Blade Runner ask, but it's going along with this horror film. Who did you get for that? And how did you guys, did you guys come up with that sound together or was that sort of an individual sort of thing on your composer alone? Yeah, our composer is Ariel Marks, um, who's absolutely brilliant. You might know her work from Shiva Baby or um, Candy, this TV series. Um, she and I are old friends and so, before she was officially on the payroll, we've been talking about this this movie for years. So she would send me these palette tests, these sort of ideas of what I thought the score was, and I would send her electronic artists, and we would sort of try to find this together. But something that was sort of a, a, a rule we made for ourselves was that the m movie needed to sound synthetic and organic. Mm. So essentially what she did was record 
me, my mother, and the three-year-old daughter of our sound mixer making different sounds and turned our voices into a synth score, uh, which, is, which is the orchestration that you hear in the movie. And, and we really wanted it to feel at times very physical and at times very digital. Mm. Now, do you think Aaron, Marin Ireland's, Marin Ireland's character is doing something right by bringing this little girl back to life? Or is she just like another Victor Frankenstein who's playing with life, but she doesn't really know what she's doing because she's thinking more about science than, you know, actual human connection? Yeah, I mean, I think Marin's character is, um, we talked a lot about her moral code when, when I was working with the actor uh, to develop this role. You know, I think she has a lot of blind spots, but unlike Victor, I think her, her motivations are a little more pure. I think mm -hmm. she essentially really does want to help people. She's a vegan, she abhors suffering, she's really trying to, um, she's trying to leave her mark on the world, which, which could be megalomaniacal, but I think she genuinely believes that she's making the world a better place. Right, yeah, yeah, it does sort of seem like that. And what made you come up with this story of someone reanimating the corpse of a deceased girl to fill the role of a mother? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I read Frankenstein when I was a little, I mean a kid, you know. Um, and before that point, all of the novels and things I had read by women were, were very much like, petticoat dramas about marriage and I couldn't relate to them at all and then I read Frankenstein and I was like holy shit a woman wrote this and yeah. <laughs> so like immediately dug into Mary Shelley and her life and it seemed to me obvious the idea that the doctor was a stand-in for herself and and what would it be like if she were a woman and what would it be like if she wanted to create something with her mind but needed to reckon with her body in order to do it. Yeah. So it came from, I mean, the child element came practically. I was like, if you're working in a morgue, you could probably only fit babies or children home in your suitcase without, w while avoiding detection. So, you know, that's where the child came from. And then immediately following is, you know, that mother's going to be looking for that child. And, and how, how is she going to enter into the story and interact with Frankenstein? So what do you think motivated Marin's character to bring a child back to life? Is it because she couldn't conceive? Because they kind of had that one scene where she, she was asking, you know, what when because she took that. Oh, I don't want to give one part away. There's oh, that's part. okay. I mean, she can conceive until yeah. until a certain point in the film. So, right. um, yeah. so that's not what motivated her. But, you know, I think one of the shades in the movie that we allude to but don't go too deeply into is is her mother's death. Mm. And, and I think, you know, for any of us, when we watch a loved one get sick and wither and die, there is that sense of helplessness that you want to take care of that person and, and yet you're limited by nature in terms of what you can do for them. And so I think watching that happen to her mother and being unable to cure it or solve it made her angry. Mm. Um, and I think ultimately that fueled her passion for her experiments. Right. If you had the power to bring back someone, would you would you do it? Would you do a Frankenstein experiment if you had the <laughs> knowledge of the where hall <laughs> or no hall? Probably. <laughs> I, I mean, probably shouldn't, but probably. I think yeah. I'd be very curious I, about. I, I'd be too. <laughs> I, I, I would do it too because... I mean, what, what have I got to lose? Am I going to go to hell if I do it? Who knows? <laughs> do you think there was any hesitation from Julia to bring her child back into her life? Because, you know, it's not really her daughter, or is it? You oh, Celie, Judy's character, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's a question that I want to leave open for the audience. You know, I did speak specifically with Judy and with AJ, the, the young girl who plays Leela, who I think does a really brilliant job. Um, in terms of how much of her is really there at any given time, you know, the old Leela. Um, but I think for, for Judy, it's ambiguous, and she chooses to believe what she wants to believe most, which is that her daughter is, is back and fully capable of fully coming back. Right, right. Well, uh, if there's anything else you want to come out with before we uh, wrap up, is there anything else you want to um, say about it? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, it's going to be this uh, birth rebirth is going to be coming to theaters in August and will be on Shutter by Halloween. So um, please Ooh. check it out if you're interested. And I hope you in enjoy might not be the right word, but I hope you uh, experience this film. Right, right. Well, some might find it enjoyable, but <laughs> it's, it's not enjoyable horror. It's not it's not Chucky killing people. But no, thank you so much. 
for doing this, Laura Moss. And uh, guys, check out Birth Rebirth when it comes out in August. All right. Thank you.